Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Time Traveler's Handbook. Today we are continuing to talk about the map of tiny perfect things. Spoilers ahead. One of the major plot points in this movie is that Margaret is hiding something through the majority of the movie. That thing turns out to be that Margaret's mother dies of cancer on the day that keeps on repeating. This brings up a kind of unique element that I haven't seen in many other films that I wanted to talk about, which is facing the death of non-looping individuals when you are stuck in a time loop. In this movie, the death that happens every time is unavoidable, but in most cases, I'll mention that the characters will try to stop the death from happening. And then that results in most cases that death happens anyways, or something else causes that death, or that death is unavoidable but they don't know it, or someone else has to die in their place. However, in this movie, Margaret knows that there's nothing that she can do to save her mother, she just has to endure the pain of loss every time. I think that has to be one of the hardest challenges that someone can face in a time loop along with any other absolutely unavoidable situation that will always happen no matter what you do. First, in a world where finality doesn't exist, these kinds of events make you realize that if you do make it out of the loop, that finality will suddenly happen and you'll lose that person. Not everyone gets a second chance, and if you are given a second chance, you feel like you can't waste it. Well, these people are getting infinite chances, so Margaret is subjecting herself to facing the finality of her mother's death every single day. And this is her primary motivation to not wanting to leave the loop, because if she does, then she has to face the fact that her mother is no longer there. The key to overcoming finality in a time loop is acceptance of the fact that it will always happen. This is what makes the other movies where the protagonist is trying to save the person that keeps on dying so devastating because it means that they aren't willing to let that person go and will thus subject themselves to the loop however many times it takes to save that person. And that can be literally like hell, like purgatory that they're stuck in, unable to leave. The easiest path out of the loop is to accept that the event happens every time, no matter what, and that you have to move on by getting out of the loop. This can teach us something about our own lives, and it's something that the movie touches on as well. Everything in your life will repeat itself over and over again until you die, and then your life will never really be what you wanted it to be. The key to breaking out of your own personal loops in your life is accepting that the losses will happen and moving on. If you're scared of missing out on things that people post on social media, if you delete your social media, then you need to accept that you're going to miss things and delete it anyways if that's having a negative impact on your life. For example, if you're scared of what you've been holding on to for years coming in handy later, but it never really comes up as something that's useful, then you have to accept that you're not going to have that in the future and get rid of it. Even being scared of losing the memory of someone by not mulling over their death every single day after they've died can be a harmful loop that you have to let go of. Getting out of negative loops in your life will give you space to build positive loops and improve your life overall. That concludes this episode. Next time we're going to continue talking about this movie and talking about an interesting storytelling element that I wanted to point out that this movie does very well. As always, thank you for listening.